Welcome to World Health News. This is Dr. Yaw Selim Salai, physician and entrepreneur and venture architect. I'm receiving really amazing feedback about World Health News, and really there is immense ideas about how World Health News should be more and more working on different areas. And one of the requests was actually around the healthcare investment. So today, I'm doing a healthcare investment exclusive just for my viewers. My first news is about where do you think the top venture capital companies are investing in digital health? In the last 10 years, digital health has exploded. Over $16 billion has been invested in the sector by venture capitals. And we have seen IPOs from Livongo, Progni, and Health Catalyst just in the last year alone. My second news is about how eight health systems are investing their venture capital dollars. And finally, in this episode, I will talk about how are healthcare venture capitals in every sector handling the COVID-19 problem. As you know, venture capital firms are making fewer investments as the COVID-19 pandemic surges around the globe it started in China, continued in Europe, and then United States and Africa. So it's a global pandemic. But many still, they still say that they are open for business. So ladies and gentlemen, my first news is about where top venture capitals are investing in digital health. As I mentioned before, in the last 10 years, over $16 billion has been invested in the sector by venture capitals, and we have seen IPOs in the top three companies like Livongo, Progri, and Health Catalyst just in the last year alone. The world of healthcare has notoriously been described as broken, plagued with high friction workflows, sky high costs, and convoluted business models. Over the past several years, a long list of innovative startups and salivating venture investors have pinned their focus on repairing the healthcare industry, but its digital transformation still appears to be in the very early innings, after a record-setting 2018. However, digital health investing continued to reach meteoric heights in 2019. Mammoth pools of capital have flooded into various sub-verticals and business models, backing collections of new B2B and B2C companies focused on optimizing healthcare workflows, improving healthcare access, and offering lower cost distribution models. Over the past two years, digital health startups have raised well over $10 billion in funding across nearly 1,000 deals, according to the data I have researched from PitchBook and Crunchbase. So, we closed out 2019 for innovation and venture investing in healthcare. Uh, I have discussed and reviewed some of the top venture capital companies uh, who work at firms spanning early to growth stages to share what's exciting for them most and where they see opportunities in the sector. And I will talk about these important venture capital experts and what their ideas are and what their expectation is. So the ones that uh, had the discussion, they talked about the trends in digital therapeutics, telehealth, mental health, and the latest in biotech and medical devices, while also diving into startups, improving medical practitioner efficiency, evaluating the evolving regulatory environment, and debating valuations, and offering a temp check on the market for digital health startup leveraging. Any case is uh, from Kleiner Perkins, Although Kleiner Perkins has a long history of investing in iconic health companies, they believe it is still the early innings of digital health as a category today. So when they evaluated the new opportunities in the space, they often start by thinking through how the company will move the needle on cost, quality, and access to care. The iron triangle of healthcare systems. Conventional wisdom has been that it's impossible to improve all three dimensions at the same time. But now they're seeing companies leveraging the technology to shift this paradigm in meaningful ways. It's no longer just a promise. For example, Viz.ai is using artificial intelligence to detect and alert stroke teams to suspected large vessel occlusion strokes, enabling patients to get treatment much faster. Their workflows improve access to life-saving care, deliver higher quality through reduced time to treatment, Every minute counts, ladies and gentlemen, as time is brain in stroke care, and dramatically reduce the costs associated with long-term disability. They are also seeing companies 
providing this type of tech-enabled care outside of the hospital setting. Modern Health is a mental health benefits platform that employers are making available to their employees. The platform triages individual employees to the right level of care, providing clinical care to those with diagnosable depression or anxiety and making self-guided or preventative care available to everyone else. So their solution improves quality and access by offering mental health services to every employee and reduces the costs associated with untreated mental health illness. So with mental health illness, as you all know, there is lost productivity and also employee churn. So heading into 2020, they are also looking into digital health companies in new areas that leverage technology to impact costs, quality, and access. A few spaces that I am excited about are behavioral health, mental health, substance abuse, addiction, care navigation, digital therapeutics, artificial intelligence, and new models integrating telehealth, remote care, and artificial intelligence, better ways of leveraging medical professionals at this time. Another experts, Dawain Dar and Adam Gerben, Lux Capital, they also have some thoughts and coming predictions on the health tech broadly. Digital therapeutics continue to pick up steam, and on the back of Peer and Ecoli, more companies push to FDA and enter the market. In the U.S. market, Food and Drug Administration is critical for approval. So in addition to the broader consumer platforms like Calm and Headspace, look to broaden their offerings by investigating clinical approvals. At least one major pharma looks to expand its consumer surface area by acquiring one of the new digital consumer-facing genetics platform, HIMSS, Row, or NeurRx. Venture funding for biotech continues to boom with at least three series A's of $100 million or more in size. Drug discovery for neurodegeneration sees a renaissance. High profile failings of Biogen and the beta amyloid hypothesis sees a shift of innovation to early stage biotech and venture creation. Big Pharma has its deep mind moment acquiring at least one machine learning, artificial intelligence enabled drug discovery company. So ladies and gentlemen, drug discovery is also changing and it's starting to use um, more and more machine learning and artificial intelligence. And Big Pharma are really focusing on those. Clinical trial tech investments heat up. So the new companies and technologies emerge to make trials patients first and systems get smarter at finding the right patients at their point of care and make sure these studies are attained and these patients can stay in the studies. And large incumbents like Equia, LabCorp and PPD get acquisitive. At least three traditional Sand Hill road tech venture firms open life science practices or raise dedicated funds. And there are also more and more funds that are being available in Europe, Turkey, as well as uh, Russia and the rest of the region, including Africa. So the machine learning targets, chemistry driven by large investments in transformer NLP models. These has, all of them have the time for computational chemistry. And finally, we'll see what will happen. So the ACIT sees a renaissance driven by increased CIO responsibility towards data interoperability. Companies either working on federated ML to allow systems to speak to each other or lightweight edge applications enabling rapid clinical deployment will see quick uptake and traction. Until now, impossible in HC. And also Kristen Baker Spawn uh, from CRV mentioned in the last 10 years, digital health has been really exploded. And they are also seeing uh, very interesting areas and there is still a lot that mystifies people about the sector and there are spots that are overheated and models that will struggle to deliver venture scale outcomes and they have seen digital health evolve firsthand as both an operator and investor and she is more excited than ever about the future of the space so ladies and gentlemen to check more about this i want you to go to techcrunch.com and look at where top venture capitals are investing in digital health. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my second news is about how eight health systems are investing their venture capital dollars. Health systems across the world have launched venture capital arms to invest in a variety of health, IT, services, medical devices, and solutions. 
So in some cases, the venture capital arms focus on technology used throughout the system, while others support startup companies with the potential to disrupt broader healthcare delivery. Here are eight health systems with venture capital arms and where they focus their investments. To recommend a health system or venture capital fund for a future list, you can also check with Laura Dyerda. And, and from Laura, you can get more information. And thanks to Laura for giving this information. So Ascension Ventures manages more than $800 million, ladies and gentlemen, in capital. It has partnered with 13 nonprofit health systems across the United States, including St. Louis-based Ascension, and shares its portfolio companies across its partnership network. Ascension Ventures' portfolio companies include Epama Medical, Ingenious Med, ISTO Technologies, Olive, VisitPay, and United Surgical Partners International. Ladies and gentlemen, Cleveland Clinic has launched more than 80 startup companies since 2000, and in 2017, Cleveland Clinic finally formed a venture. And uh, this venture is formed to invest in emerging healthcare companies that would result in financial returns for the health system. CCV supports the health system's physician innovators to develop, finance, and grow spin out companies. It also invests in companies that have strategic value for the very own Cleveland Clinic in population health management, patient experience, precision medicine, and the digital transformation of care delivery. Portfolio companies include Custom Orthopedic Solutions, Explorees, and Image IQ. Another venture comp company, Intermountain Ventures Fund, is Salt Lake City-based Intermountain Healthcare Strategic Investment Vehicle that targets innovative companies with high return, high growth opportunities. Intermountain Ventures typically invests three to five million dollars over the life of a portfolio company, with a minimum investment of one million dollars. It focuses on health IT companies, and its current portfolio includes Zebra Medical Vision, SciFs, and Redox. Kaiser Permanente Ventures is also another very important one, ladies and gentlemen. Kaiser Permanente Ventures has invested in and supported more than 65 companies over the past 20 plus years. In partnership with Oakland, California-based Kaiser Permanente, KPV targets health IT, digital health, healthcare services, medical devices, diagnostics, and precision medicine companies. Its portfolio includes Ginger, Genome Medical, Lighters, and Health Catalyst, OSF Healthcare. In Peoria, also launched a $75 million venture capital arm back in 2016, and a second $75 million fund in just July 2019. So the OSF Ventures invests in technology to improve outcomes or reduce costs and collaborates with technology to deploy across its 13 hospital health system. OSF Ventures has invested in 15 companies directly, including Regroup, a Chicago-based telemedicine solutions company. Another very important venture comp comp company is Providence Ventures. Providence Ventures invests in companies that improve quality and lower costs at Providence, St. Joseph Health, and beyond. It initially launched in 2014 and manages $300 million of venture capital fund on behalf of the Renton wash based health system across two funds. Provident Ventures targets health IT, medical devices and diagnostics, and health services companies. And current portfolio companies include Zelt, Trillion Health, and Kairos. TMC Venture Fund is another very important one. TMC Venture Fund, funded through TMC Corporation is a $25 million fund supporting healthcare innovation in Houston, Texas. Affiliated with Houston-based Texas Medical Center, the fund's portfolio companies include Madeable, Non-Invasics, and Luma Health. The fund focused on early-stage companies and makes investments on a quarterly basis. Unity Point Health in West Des Moines, Iowa, founded Unity Point Health Ventures in 2019 to support just the digital health, medical device, and health IT, as well as the healthcare services startups. Unity Point Ventures portfolio currently includes FRMX, RX Review, and Health Catalyst. The $100 million fund supports the 32 hospital health systems innovation center, which encourages employees to make process improvements within the health system. Kudos to all of them. For more information, you can also check the Becker BeckersHospitalReview.com and look into the how eight health systems are investing their venture capital dollars, thanks to Becker's health system. My final news is about the how 
our healthcare VCs in every sector handling the COVID-19 problem. As you know, this is a global pandemic. And the venture capital firms are making fewer investments as the COVID-19 pandemic surges more and more also in globally as well as United States. But many still say they are still open for business. A number of venture capital firms said they are still open for business in spite of the COVID-19 pandemic. But deal making has slowed substantially. As companies weigh what will be needed to survive the coming months, how you invest in the midst of a health crisis that has left a third of the U.S. population stuck at home, and maybe it will be the entire population, and with many business struggling. This is the question. Med City News, thanks to Med City, interviewed venture capital firms focused on digital health, biotechnology, and medtech by phone and by email. And several investors shared their strategies for weathering the storm and what advice they are giving portfolio companies. So remember, COVID-19 is not just a health issue, but it's also a financial storm. Dennis Dippenbush, director of New Ventures Initiative for Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Kansas, the New Ventures Initiative is the corporate venture arm of Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Kansas with investments in healthcare technology and population health. Their notable investments are Healthify and Payphone. And the, basically, we checked if they are still investing. And they are saying as a corporate venture capital arm of Blue Cross, they always look to see if their investments can be integrated into their operations. Since their operations have been significantly impacted, it's going to take longer, and they are going to look with an eye if they can realistically implement anything in the next 12 to 18 months. And in terms of their investment strategy, uh, their strategy has not changed. They look at companies that create operational efficiencies within Blue Cross and also impact their highest cost members with chronic disease or any other type of member engagement. With or without a pandemic, those problems will exist. So this actually has created a huge opportunity for telemedicine and telehealth. COVID-19 taught all of us how to work remotely and how to also get treatment and medical advice remotely. With the relaxed regulations comes the risk of bad players coming into the market or people taking advantage of the weakness. There will be winners and there will be losers. And the expectation is once they get back to normal operations, those regulations should tighten up. And how are the companies handling the pandemic? When we look at them, the lockdowns of each city is continuing. And uh, they had the realization that every one of their startups in their portfolio or portfolio companies needed to prepare for the world, which means at least collectively with some of their co-investors, they were seeing that revenue would stop for 60 to 90 days. And most of the portfolio companies have acted proactively and made the needed changes, such as executive salary reductions, layoffs, or furloughs. There are varying levels of pain, and it all depends on where they are in the fundraising process. Some of the portfolio companies fortunately had recently been funded. They had the flexibility of holding on to cash. A few of the others were caught in needing additional funding during the pandemic, lockdown, and recovery. So there is a lot that has changed over the past several weeks. In general, valuations are going down and terms are getting more and more stringent. The macroeconomic profile has changed. Julia Grant, the general partner with Canaan Partners, is also a very important person that I have reviewed her opinion. Canaan Partners invests in software, medical device, and biotechnology companies. Notable investments of Canaan Partners are protagonist therapeutics and cellular research. And the question was if they are still actively seeking out new investment. In the last uh, one month, they were definitely slower when it pertains to new deals. The priority has been and will be to help the portfolio shift its operations and problem solve in real time. And uh, nowadays, they are taking a few new investment meetings and a virtual pitch by Zoom to the full partnership. And Canaan had already decided to implement work from home, like many of us, and a week before the Bay Area shelter in place notice, so they were ready to go. Virtual pitches are already a regular part of the venture business, ladies and gentlemen, so that is not a change. When the reality sunk in that this pandemic was here in the US, and what did the founders actually do? That was the question. 
And basically, these companies had frequent calls and Zooms and conversations across their portfolios with their CEOs and teams, and they are trying to help solve problems faster so they can have more of their time and mind free to be forward-looking. Everyone is considering ways to extend the runway and also keep work moving forward where possible. And executives in small biotech companies are going to heroic efforts right now, ladies and gentlemen. I can see them first and foremost taking care of their team and ensuring their transition to remote work. From there, the focus is understanding in detail the dependencies related to critical activities. For example, our key partner organizations such as CROs, academics, clinical sites or suppliers working and our key individuals able to operate. People are thinking hard about forward-looking hiring and spend to ensure that the activities to be enabled really can move forward. And Basically, the advice that can be given to them are, if you can make forward progress, keep going. If not, try to get the facts, be realistic, and take a deep breath before making the decisions. Big picture is definitely expect the pace of funding to slow down across the United States and globally as a result of this crisis for a number of reasons. But deals will still get done. There is capital, there is money, and a lot of great companies out there. Also, Michael Greeley, the co-founder and general partner at Flair Capital Partners, uh, is a very important person. And Flair Capital Partners invests in digital health and healthcare technology companies. Their notable investments that I have reviewed were Sukai, Iora Health, and Bright Health. And, and the, basically, the fourth correction they live through when they look at it. So, it's almost impossible to make investment decisions for them in the near term. And they structure an investment given all the unknowns. And the inability to actually sit with people is also harder. So the best companies get created coming out of these horrible disruptions, ladies and gentlemen. And everyone in the innovative ecosystem and VC knows that. So no one is out of the market. But what did they just learn is the supply chain the supply chain, analytics, and care at a distance that could create a new company. So the biggest frustration is you just can't meet with these people face to face. It's nearly impossible to make a judgment on the people, the team. So if you can't see them together in action, it's a weird experience. And they are all, and the entire ecosystem is all learning how to use Zoom at the same time. So uh, basically in the portfolio companies, what are the things they have been working on? The initial wave of work over the last few weeks have been what are the immediate needs in the portfolio. Most firms have triaged what companies are raising and what companies need to raise. And then some stress testing in the fall will come up and then there will be some scenarios that have been run where and what if a recession were imminent. And the thought violations were way ahead of themselves. And Basically, these VC companies are encouraging them to raise capital sooner. So back in January, these companies began to look at the scenarios. Not that they knew it would be this devastating, but they thought it could be a difficult year because some of their customers were overseas. And what if the revenues were down 20% or 40%? And are there cost-cutting steps to take now? And basically, when we look at the broader market, they have a couple companies in processes to get sold so far. That hasn't changed. And basically, if you say today, I'm going to sell this company, that's been pushed off six months, ladies and gentlemen. The run of the mail M&A activity, that's been severely delayed. Obviously, there is no IPO market. So the big worry is about what if we haven't flattened the curve? What that means for our collective psyche? If we haven't flattened the curve and the numbers enormously skyrocket, there is a big worry in the financial world that as a society, they may have this real malaise set in. And this can mean we just don't know what it means for business activity. Also, another opinion from Daniel Haders. Daniel Haders is the managing director of healthcare for Next Cube and operating partner for Sway Ventures. Haders heads up Next Cube's digital healthcare program. He also manages Sway Ventures' healthcare technology portfolio. Their notable investments were LE Health, MedCrypt, and Trials.ai. And when they have been asked if they are still investing, they said they are open for business, both at NextCube and Sway Ventures. That being said, when it comes to new investments, of course, inevitably, 
they think it would be become a little bit slower, and time lines are going to change in the midst of this process. You think twice as hard as you were thinking before with twice as many questions that go into the due diligence process, which I am very well aware, ladies and gentlemen. So the types of companies are, uh, when you're, they are looking to invest are actually, they basically what they do, they do a stress test for any company that they are evaluating. Any company that is going to be truly great in the next 10 to 20 years is a company that should not only be able to weather the current storm, but also be part of the solution. So things are clearly serious right now, but the digital health community has a moment of time to justify what is the potential of this technology, not just the potential for themselves and the industry. And when they are asked about how they're helping their current portfolio companies, they said when this becomes real, as investors, they were thinking about this in two ways. There are real people at these companies that are going to be impacted. So they jumped in to start speaking with them and the portfolio companies. Worst case scenario, how do they weather the situation? How do, do they actually keep as many of their employees as possible? And many great companies will be born or accelerate during this pandemic. Don't forget that. And there are many great companies that will lose just because what they are and this pandemic don't fit. And they want to help those companies. So once a company is stabilized and they figure out a plan so that everyone can survive, then they ask, how can we help with the pandemic? And they have seen a number of companies spring into action here. Repurposed artificial intelligence, a company that has developed an artificial intelligence drug discovery platform, looks for opportunities to repurpose drugs that have an NDA or failed late state clinical trials for non-safety reasons. They rebuilt their drug discovery platform to target the ACE2 receptor that the medical and scientific community believes is required for infection. This is one of the options. And when they look at the market in general, investing will occur, but it will be extremely selective. People will be looking for companies that can impact the pandemic today and become market leaders tomorrow as they emerge from this. So the volume of deals they are expecting is to be reduced. There is no question that will occur, but they do not expect the entire market to seize up. And funds have been raised, healthcare is at the front of what is going on. Another very important person, Tom Sheha, managing partner for Arboretum Ventures. Arboretum Ventures, ladies and gentlemen, invest in medical devices, diagnostics, and healthcare technology. Their notable investments are ARA, Envision, and Pair Therapeutics. And when they are asked about their portfolio companies, how they respond to the pandemic, they said they have a number of their companies that are actively engaged in efforts to assist with coronavirus pandemic. And they have a telemedicine ICU company that is helping to support ICUs throughout the country. ICU stands for intensive care unit, ladies and gentlemen. And they also have another molecular diagnostics company that is developing a rapid turnaround COVID-19 diagnostic test. And they have another company that's in the healthcare provider education space that is working to educate surge physicians. And they are continuing to look at new deals. They are spending a disproportionate amount of time on their existing portfolio companies right now. They are doing teleconferences and staying very closely in touch with their companies, but remotely. And, and when they look at the broader market, there has been some slowdown in the deal flow, but they continue to take calls. And they think that there is going to be some slowdown in the closing of new deals while they get a clarification of what's going to happen in the market and there is some market resetting. Everyone is stressed testing the plans within the companies regarding the adequacy of capital reserves and how this crisis affects their business model. So it's time to think innovatively and change the business models if needed. And at a time of crisis like this, pulling back to the basics. How is your team? How do you meet their needs? What are your cash reserves and your runway? How do you need to adapt your product or offering in the near term? How do you adapt to what might be a very different healthcare marketplace post the virus era? And I think this will, this will be the impactful to some degree through 2020. And the advice to the startups that can be given is lean on the networks of their investors and advisors and mentors for their health. Focus on the key parts of their business the health and wellness of their teams, their runway, and how their product or products fit. And despite all of the unknowns and the uncertainty of the timing, figure out the opportunities in this very difficult time. I want them to remain optimistic. It's going to be rough, but at some point, things will improve. 
Another very important person, Steve Toll, the partner with H&M Venture Partners. H&M Venture Partners invests in digital health solutions, medical devices, and health IT companies. And their notable investments are Empulse, Mobile, Rubicon, MD, and Able2. And when they are asked about if they are still investing right now, they say they still have a couple of deals they are doing diligence on. And they are doing diligence over Zoom, which for some of their partners is new. And these types of companies uh, they are looking are always five to seven years down the road. So say you have a vaccine for this in a year and this issue goes away and the company has to be valuable beyond that. So they are always a little hesitant to invest in a company that is completely dependent on selling to hospitals. The sale is challenging and margins have be, always been an issue. So companies that sell technologies to hospitals right now are actually going to find it very difficult to sell anything unless it directly benefits to respond to this COVID-19 pandemic. And they are looking at some companies in point of care diagnostic testing. One of these companies is doing rapid development of COVID-19 point of care tests. Things that happen in the home or with telehealth, also they think this is a fundamental shift and those are good areas to invest in. And they were the first investors to Teladoc back in the day. It's great to see telehealth get the adoption that they are hoping it will get. And the companies and their reaction when that has been asked, most of their company CEOs are immediately worried about the financial health of the business. They need to survive and be able to provide services. That's where they are trying to help them. The issue for investors is how long will this last? When will we be able to return to a sense of normalcy? Well, some say 30, 40, or 60-day reality, and that's very different than 180-day reality. And compared to the 2008 downturn, the companies are in a much better position right now than what they experienced in 2008 and 2009. Up until this happened, many of the companies were having really strong quarters. It hasn't been a financial crisis. It's been a health crisis. Most of the companies have done recent financing rounds and have healthy balance sheets in the near term. And some of them are going to benefit from this because they are providing a valuable service that healthcare systems or providers need, such as one company, Empulse Mobile, does patient engagement and mobile messaging. They have seen a huge uptick in demand just to get the word out to members on where they go and if they have any symptoms of COVID-19. Ladies and gentlemen, this covers this very important venture capital exclusive uh, episode. This is Dr. Yavu Selim Salai, physician, entrepreneur, and venture architect. Take care and all the best. Stay safe, stay healthy.